I think we're sending a message loud and clear. We expect people to comply with our lawful subpoenas, regardless of what your last name is. And the days of the federal government turning a blind eye to the president's family's corruption is over. We expect the president's son to come in and answer specific questions about bank records that we have. Okay, Congressman Russell Fry is a Republican from South Carolina and joins me now. Congressman, uh, will you hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress? Well, my vote will be to uphold the rule of law and uphold the institution of the House and hold him in contempt. Look, you cannot defy a subpoena. If you do that in a court, you're going to get locked up and thrown in jail. He came to the Capitol. He sat there. He went to the Senate side and then skipped town in a suburban. It's time to hold him accountable. We are not the Department of Justice. We're not going to give him a pass because his last name is Biden. It's time for some accountability, and he needs to testify. Well, when will all this play out? You're going to say you're contempt of Congress. When do you lay that charge on him and get a response? Well, tomorrow is, is the committee will uh, t meet uh, both in the House Judiciary and Oversight Committee to have that formal markup, uh, and then it will proceed to the floor where I anticipate that he will be held in contempt of Congress. So if he's then held in contempt of Congress, what's the penalty for that? Well, the penalty is a $100,000 fine, up to a $100,000 fine, and up to one year in jail. Of course, that goes uh, to Secretary uh, uh, of the DOJ, and then, and then you know, they prosecute. But they have a history of prosecuting people who have failed to come before Congress. So we expect them to do the same if we have this vote but that you But you're expecting the Department of Justice under President Biden to actually fine and maybe put in prison the president's son. Really? Correct. Well, I mean, if you look at just last year, and they've done this, uh, they've when when Congress has held people like Steve Bannon in contempt of Congress, you know, they pursued him, and we expect them if we hold this vote and he's held in contempt to do the same. You know, there are some people out, outside observers maybe who are looking at what's going on and say, look, this is a tit for tat situation. Democrats pull Trump into court, remove him from the ballot. You guys try to impeach the president and go after his son tit for tat. A lot of people don't like it. What do you say? Well, I, I, I disagree with that characterization. Look, 70 percent of the American people believe that, that Joe Biden af, acted either unethically or illegally. And so it's really important that as we build our case, unlike the Democrats, we're building it brick by brick and, and laying out the case, pursuing the evidence and letting the evidence guide us. This isn't some predetermined outcome like the Democrats had with President Trump. This is what this is what the founders intended. And when somebody doesn't comply with a lawful subpoena, it's time to hold them accountable. Now, the Wall Street Journal editorial board is calling on you to reach, not you personally, but the Republican Party in the House, to reach a, a deal on the border. Can you tell us if you're at all close to a deal on the border? I think most of those discussions are in the Senate. The House's position has been H.R. 2, which we passed back in the spring, is collecting dust on Senator Chuck Schumer's desk. And so our position is very clear where we are right now. And so I hope that if they reach a deal, that it actually does what it says that it's going to do, which is to secure the border. We don't need continual lipstick on a pig. We need the actual border secure. We have 300,000 migrants that crossed into our country just last year, 270 people on the terror watch list. It's astronomical what is happening, and it's because of the policies of this administration. Is the border now a more important issue in the election than the economy? Well, I think certainly the border is, is the issue today. If you look at, you know, what is going on on our southern border, the American people are, when I'm in district, they're talking about it constantly because they see what is going on. They see 300 Americans die every single day from fentanyl poisoning. They're tired of the same status quo that this administration is giving. And so for right now, uh, it is the issue of the day. The economy obviously dominates on every poll that we talk about. People feel the pinch, uh, but the border is, is right up there as well. The truth is, uh, the... They only see what's going on on the border if they're watching Fox, and that is the reality of American media today, I'm afraid. Congressman, That's thank, true. Congressman, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it, always. Thank thanks you, Stuart.